Lost You, Felicity here from Felicity Fizz Cross Stitches. Back with my second video. I meant to film earlier, however, we're on a holiday and then life happened. Just like to say thank you so much to everyone who subscribed to my channel since my first video. I think I have around 360 subscribers now and I cannot believe it. I thought I'd only get about 100 if that. So thank you very much to everyone who has subscribed. I'd also like to thank everyone who has commented on my video and been so welcoming. I was very nervous in my first video and I loved getting every single comment. I read through all the comments, I liked and I replied to them as many as I could. If I have forgotten any, I'm sorry, but I hope I have replied to everyone. I would also like to th say thank you to two people. Okay, the first person I'd like to say thank you is to Kay's Cross Stitch. She shouted me out on her channel as a floopy. Um, that was really, I really appreciate that. The other person I'd like to th uh, thank is Jessie Marie Does Stuff. She did such a lovely shout out and I couldn't believe it. I have to admit, I did watch that comment over many times. What I'm going to start off with today is going to be my whips, okay? So out of my uh, four projects I've been working on, I did stitch on three. Uh, mainly two most got most progress and I've only just started stitching another one recently. The reason why I haven't filmed so much is because we went on a cruise. Um, in Australia, we have two weeks holidays in July. Um, so one of those weeks we took off to go on holiday. While I was on that holiday, I decided to take one of my whips with me. The whip that I decided to take was my Fantasy Castle number two. I've actually realized when I've been talking about this in my previous videos, I've actually, or video, I've actually been calling it Fantasy Castle number four. Whoops, my mistake, it's actually number two. I'm going to insert a picture here somewhere um, of what it looked like last time. I took this one because it was my oldest whip and I really wanted to get some progress done. I didn't want to take Elsa because she was too large to take and I use a frame. This one I could easily take and stitch on a Q-snap. So, let's see, what have I done so far? Mainly I just continued to work on those clouds here. Let's get in zoom closer. So, Last time I showed you this, I think I was around this area here. So what I've done so far is I've added those clouds going down. I didn't get a full page finish, okay? Because when I was doing this, I did have to do quite a lot of frogging. When I first, just gonna peep out here, when I first started stitching this, I realized I miscounted around this area and everything was off about by one or two rows. A little bit of swearing later, quite a lot of ripping, fix that mistake. What I've learned from doing this when I took it away is that when I work in full coverage pieces, I like to grid. I have been using a blue pen lately to grid. Um, and I didn't take that away with me when I went when I worked on this. So if I think if I had my blue grid pen, whatever it's called, I would have been able to make so much more progress. These um, stitches down here marks the end of the page. So honestly, I've only got about 200 stitches left to go to finish this page. I hope to get back to it soon. I'm also stitching this, um, the pa pattern is also just on paper. So, not quite used to using paper again. I probably need to try and either do it on my iPad or just grin and bear it and use the paper. But I was really pleased to get some progress on that again. I hope to, I'm not going to make any plans, but I hope to stitch on it soon. All right. The other whip that I've only just started working on is my Once Upon a Time Quick Stitch by Amy Stewart. Last time you see this, I'd only done one page, okay? And I will insert a picture of that here. What you can see now 
okay, is I've started the new Heaven and Earth Designs challenge. This challenge is to stitch um, in diagonal, so like one uh, in diagonal, so only having your corners matching. But it's also to include feathering. I've never done any type of feathering. So what you can see up here, if I zoom in closely without trying to get you too much of a shadow. All right. As you can see on over here, all right, there's, it's not always going in the same box. Okay, so that's what we mean by feathering. I'm not sure how I'm going to go. Like, I'll try it. I'll give it a try and I'll continue. But I'm not sure. This one I decided to pick up again when the challenge was out because I wasn't in the mood to go into this living room and stitch on Elsa using the frame. Also, I was in my study where it's warm because it's winter at the moment. I could sit in there and I could just do it. So I hope to get back to her soon. I have to admit, I am loving using all the bright colours. Um, just so many lovely browns, greens, really bright colours. That's been really good. Um, my needle minder there is a butterfly. It's from Needle Obsessions um, Facebook group. She lives, does all of her work up in Darwin. So try and support her as much as I can. What I'm gonna show you now is my last whip that I've worked on. This one is my Elsa. This time when I show her to you, she's not going to be off the frame. I'm actually just gonna show her on the frame. So this is Elsa by um, Anna Dittman. Okay, at the moment she's on my quantum frames. So what you can probably see is since the last time you saw her, I have a page finish. Okay, I finished page 21. When I finished this page, okay, um, it was actually when we got back from our holiday. All I had to left to stitch was DMC, 712, so 712 cream. And oh my god, am I sick of that colour. But we got through it. Then what I've decided is instead of going across, right, instead of going across, um, let's see how I can do this. Instead of going across here to stitch, okay, I was going to go across here and continue off the row like I've done all the other times to stitch Elsa. What I decided to do instead was to actually go downwards. When I went downwards, I went down to page 26. And let me just move my needle minders. Most of page 26 here is actually just cream as metallics. I hope you can see that shimmering. Oh yes, there we go. Okay. So, I went down to finish this page here. This page is, is about half finished so far. I have also have another row of pages underneath, but there's only like three stitches wide on there. It's not very much as well. So what I've actually done is gone down and I'm stitching that page at the same time. So, what we're doing here is when you see that bottom bit down here, all right, that's actually the end of Elsa. That's the very bottom. I can't believe it. That's the very bottom of Elsa. It's so exciting. I just, I can't believe it. Sorry, I do have notes here. So what I'm hoping to do is, once I finish this video, is actually get some time to stitch on her tonight. Most of my stitching time at the moment is Friday night, Saturday night, and depending how I prep for the next week at school's going, some, sometimes a bit of Sunday. So I'm going to have a go. I'm going to see if I can get this finished, this page at least, because I finished off the metallic on that page. I find at the moment it's actually easier for me to stitch the metallic first. Oh, look, yes, oh, yes, you can see that shimmering. So I've only got DMC left to stitch on there, and I only have... Mainly cream, some ecru, more cream, and I think here is the beginning of her braid. Alright, so coming down this way, she has her plait coming down in front of her, um, and it's a braid. 
Funny story. I told this to mum last night, saying I could start to see some, the start of her brain. She heard the start of her brain. Be funny. So, really enjoyed this, okay? And I hope to get back to her soon. The next part of my video is just a bit of haul that I've bought over the last couple of weeks. Um, I did say that I, like in my last video, that I had a very big order coming through from one, coming from one, two, three stitch, mainly full of beads. That has been placed, and I'm hoping that it will arrive sometime next week. What has happened though is when I've been doing that order, is things have been going in stock and out of stock on this um, on my cart. So when I've noticed that bees have been going out of stock, but they've been able to find them in an Australian seller, I've been going through and actually buying them through there. So my first bit of haul is actually from the Threaded Needle. They're a needlework store that I can get most of my things online, but they're also based over in Victoria. I did two orders of these. So one order, I ordered a chart and some beads. And then the second order arrived this week just been. Um, with some more beads. These beads are all from Mill Hill and they're basically all ready to kit up a lot of mirabilia. I decided when I was buying, um, doing these orders is that if I could buy all the beads and all the specialty th um, threads, I wouldn't need to do an order for a very long time. The only thing I'd need to get would be fabric. So I can't remember which bead goes for which mirabilia pattern at the moment. But there is more coming, and these are for the ones I already have. So here we've got two packets of, oops, sorry, um, 03004 and antique glass beads. We have one packet of 00020 glass seed beads. This one we have here is 03055. More antique glass beads. Um, glass beads 03048. Focus. Here we go. Some crystal treasures. Okay. 13015. Um, petite glass beads, so 42014, and I have two packets of these. Once I get the rest of my beads, I'll um, organise them into my bead organiser, and I will show that in a later video. The other thing that I've received from the Threaded Needle was a Mirabilia chart. This chart I fell in love with when I first started looking at Mirabilia's. It's Elizabeth uh, by Mirabilia, okay, um, or Nora Corbett. This design is named for my favourite movie icon. I am so inspired with the fearless, beautiful way she has lived her life. She swam with sharks and took wild road trips and truly lived. That's what it says in the back by Nora. This is going to be 212 stitches wide by 277 stitches down. On the back, it actually is mainly only consists of DMC and two beads. Okay, so I'm not quite sure what fabric I'll stitch her on yet, but she will be stitched. I love the purples in her dress. Absolutely adore the purples. Whoops, glare. There we go. Absolutely adore those purples. Anyone who knows me knows that I love purple. Next, on Facebook, I saw that one of my local needlework shops was having a sale um, out in Unley. So it's about 20, 30 minutes drive, depending on traffic, um, away. From here, I, again, bought some more beads, found some Krynik on sale, and quite a, quite a few patterns. So I'll start off by showing you the beads. All right, so some nice blues, uh, clear, light blue some glass big petal beads, some smaller ones, again some smaller ones, oops, sorry. All right, with the Kranix, I have, these are all blending filaments, all right, so this is a lovely purple, 
All right, this purple is number number 12 a nice sky blue okay number 14 and then a dusky pink which is number seven i know people say acrylic is work hard to work with but i thought these are on sale the only thing that's wrong is the packaging and i thought i'd just have a bit of fun and play around with them The other two, two of the patterns that I found were from, I think it's from Make It or DMC. Um, and I know that Tammy from Colour Cascades used to stock them, but I don't know if they're still in stock or not. The first one is I Sublime My Rage Through Needlework. Okay, and the name of this pattern is called Sublime My Rage. Rage. I think these would be really nice to do on a hand dyed fabric. Um, with either a variegated thread or just to do it on hand dye fabric with one colour thread. I also found um, in the same range, okay, this one is I stitch to keep the voices quiet. God, isn't that so true? That is so true. From this um, place, I also found um, two mirabilia patterns. They had plenty of patterns there. Quite a few of them were also out of print. So maybe one day I'll go back and I'll have a look through. The first one I want to show you is the Peony, Peony Garden. Again, I love these, these flowers. Okay, what it says on the back is, exuberant double blossom peonies create a purple haze at twilight with names like Cup of Shining Night Stormy Enchantress and Red Embroidered Needle Ball. It is no wonder that the peony tree is the center of every spring imperial garden. This one here is 190 times 290. When I was going on to 103 stitch, I realized I had to get the water lily, water, the Karen water lilies. I have never stitched with any type of silk thread before. So this will be new. She also only has two types of beads. So it'll be good that there's less beads, but then I'm working with the silks, which are going to be very new. And I can't wait to see what they're like. I got notice this morning that it has arrived in Sydney. So hopefully it will be on the, um, on the way to Adelaide. All right, the last Mirabilia chart that I got from the local needlework store was Fairy Moon. I've heard people say that they can't get this chart anymore. This chart was designed in 1993 by Nora Corbett. Look at that dress. Isn't that intricate? Hang on, let's see if I not get the glare. I have no idea what fabric I stitched this on, but it looks stunning. This one has a lot of DMC. It also has a couple of beads and then includes quite a lot of half stitches. Be really excited to see other people's finishes of this one as to see what type of fabric they've used. But isn't she pretty? So pretty. Next bit of haul was from the Aussie Stash Unload site um, on Facebook. This lady was unloading a mirror pattern and this one here, or a mirror pattern here, um, called the Feather, Feather Fairy. I just love all the, the different types of colours in that dress. I love how it looks like it's a feathers as well. This one says, become lost in the splendour of blue and green with this prancing miniature fashion muse. With delicate iridescent wings and velvety feathered skirt, she breathes new life into old age craft. Cross stitch and decorate the everyday with textures from nature mixing grace and color from head to toe. This one is 193 times by 243. A lot of DMCs, two metallics and one bead. Again, she's gonna be lovely to stitch. Don't know what well, stitch you're on yet, but we'll go through that. One last little bit of haul, okay? 
I did mention in my last video that I signed up to the monthly mysteries from Tammy at Colicus Gay Fabrics. I know recently she's had some trouble with some of her suppliers, so I do have a little bit for here. The first thing I want to talk about is back in May, I did order um, a 13 by 18 of her old um, gold dinger and old map style. Okay, so this one here is to, tr to try and simulate a beach. The colour is okay, but it's a little bit more uh, sandy colour rather than looking like that. This is a 32 count Lagana, um, again 13 by 18. I bought this for one reason, for one particular pattern, okay? And the reason I bought that is to replace the fabric for this pattern. The Gold Collection Petite Seashell Treasures. Currently, this has been sitting as a UFO because I do not like the fabric and I do not like the thread. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to start over. And when I start over, I am going to use that fabric from Tammy. This was my previous start. Okay, I don't like that Ada. It's 18 count Ada, but it's so stiff and oh, I don't like it. So I also didn't like the threads because with this pattern here from Dimensions, it doesn't just use two strands. I'm using one strand as well as three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a conversion from, DMC, from Dimensions thread through a DMC and I'm going to stitch it that like that. So I'll use my own thread. I do have every single DMC colour other than the new ones. Just by, you can see, I don't like how, like the thread is all here. It's all on these thread cards. I don't know, it just, I don't like the, the thread. I've tried using Thread Heaven with it. Don't like it. Like, just don't like the way the thread feels. Not, not my favourite thing. The other thing that's come from Tammy is my June month June monthly mystery. This one here is also again 32 count Lagana, but I've got 18 by 26. I think it's actually one of her regular lines. It's called Fairy Wear Boots. Let's see how we go and get in the colour. Okay, so it blends in my t-shirt, but it's a nice pink. So it's like pink with a darker pink going through it. Let's see how we go. Yeah, not too bad. You can see some of the mottling coming up there. I think that's how you say it. Really pretty. I am thinking this would be really nice to go on one of my mirabilias, but I'm not sure which one. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. And that's my haul. And that's for my video. Thank you very much for watching. Again, thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel and to all of the comments. I hope to record some more videos soon. I don't mean for it to go so long this time. Alright, thank you and goodbye. Hi guys, just wanted to show you my new page finish on Elsa. I've now finished page 26 and 31. Finished all the way down to the bottom.